All right, my Tabor City home here, and today we are uh, still working on the master bedroom. So, as you can see, um, we're painting uh, all the trim. Well, not trim. Um, we're doing what we're what we call cutting in, and when you cut in in painting, what you're trying to do are all these areas that are corners or close to trim, close to ceiling, those type of things. You're gonna paint those with a brush um, because you can't paint them with a roller. Even, even if you have a really good roller, you can't get the roller close enough into this corner to paint the very corner here. So we call this cutting in. Um, this small brush here is what was used to cut in around the ceiling. And as you can see, um, here at the ceiling we have this molding and and there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of wall just above the molding between the molding and the ceiling so we use this little it's a I think it's a one inch brush yeah one inch brush for that um, years ago when I worked on a paint crew they would absolutely just have excoriated me if I would have used a one inch brush on anything um, paint crews are about getting job done quickly in order to optimize you know the next job you can get to in the next job so you can make money and you can't spend a lot of time uh, messing with a one inch brush but my house no pressure just take a one inch brush and do it recommend that if you're not used to painting um, that you go ahead and use a one inch brush to cut in and the reason is is because you get a lot more control with it and you you can you can be a little bit better about finding that straight line that smooth line with a brush so that being said this is what we would have used uh, this is what i used on the ceilings but i'm on the walls now and so now i'm using this brush which is a two and a half inch brush and we're using this to cut in we cut in this uh this piece of wall and down here by the baseboard um a couple of things that may present challenges to you. electrical boxes okay so remove the electrical boxes whoever painted this uh, this bedroom previously you can see that they didn't even remove the faceplate they just painted right over it it's a terrible terrible job um, but you remove all the electrical boxes be very careful and then you just cut in around them. and so we're gonna take our brush we're gonna dip it in the paint as you can see we don't have we did not fill that entire brush up with paint we have maybe a half inch of paint on the end of that brush we're gonna come in here we're not gonna get those bristles anywhere near if you're not sure whether or not you can do this without putting bristles wet paint bristles in a live electrical area then just go ahead and shut the power off. And if you're really concerned about it, just pay somebody else to paint it for you. It's not worth the not worth the headache or the heartache of getting hurt trying to paint this kind of stuff. So, um, so we come in here, we paint around the box. Now, this being said, this is what we would do if we were painting um, a box that was on a wall that we could paint the rest of it with a roller. We would come through and just paint around this box. But that's not the case here. And the case here is that this area right here is so narrow that there's no way we can get a roller in here. So we're gonna have to paint all that by hand. So we're gonna set this up. We're gonna kind of give you a, an idea of how we go about painting and trim here. So gonna go through get just a little bit of paint on the very end of our bristles we're gonna come down here the baseboard we're gonna draw that we're gonna come over here in this corner now almost every but every brush you can get brushes that are flat again flat brushes have their job but if you're cutting in you want a brush that's beveled. And see how the top of that brush doesn't go straight across? It's got a little bit of an angle to it. That will help you cut in corners, okay? So, again, a little bit of paint. We're gonna bring it down here. We go right down the side. 
this trim. We're just going to make a nice, slow, even pass. We can come back again, second time, pick up some more of that paint we left on there. Third time, we can pick up even more. And so what we can do is, as we paint that, we can actually, we don't have to get that paint right up against that wood trim the very first pass. We can actually, that first time you lay that paintbrush on the, on the wood, on the uh, wall, you're, you're actually leaving a, a fair amount of paint on that wall. So what we can do is we just walk the paint over several strokes into the trim. And that way you give yourself multiple passes, multiple ability, to get in there and get it right. No pressure, you're not trying to do it all in one pass. And again, the reason we're painting this section by hand right here is that the roller's not gonna fit in here. So again, we're gonna come here, we're gonna place our brush, we're gonna come right down along the trim, nice smooth, one even pass all the way down. And we got it. So we're going to come back a second time. We're going to look at the line. There's a line being formed there with the bristles. And we're just going to walk that line straight down into the trim. There we go. And then we're going to brush it out. We're going to clean it up a little bit. So let's take a look at what we've done so far. As you can see, we have pretty good. We don't have paint on the trim we have a pretty decent line coming up through here so now we're going to come through here and i'm going to show you what i'm talking about when i say walk this line so we're going to take the brush now again that's you know that's that's the paint we have on the brush we're going to take the brush we're going to come down here as you can see we're not on the trim we're close to the trim, but we're not on the trim, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same line and we're gonna walk it straight down the trim and we're just coming down, nice, even stroke. Okay, so if you see right here, there's a little bit that's missing. So we'll come back down with the brush again a third time pick that part up pick that part up and done so now you see there's paint on the wall there's no paint on the trim so we're gonna come through here let me get a little bit more paint on my brush as you can see we have that much paint on the brush no paint on the other side we wiped it off on the can as we came through here so we're just gonna come through we're gonna get our paint on the wall. Again. All right. So, here we go. We have paint on the brush, no paint on the other side, right? So, I want you to see if we can capture it, how much pressure we put on that brush. See how the, the very top edge of that brush has a little bit of pressure on it? It's Kind of like using a pin. There we go. Look on the wall, look on the trim. There's no paint on the trim. All right. So we're gonna come in here, grab the paint that we need, and we're gonna paint up. Okay. Now, why do we paint all around except for about like, we paint about an inch and a half worth of a line around here? Well, we paint that inch and a half because when we come down with a roller, we want to come down, we want to get the wall with the roller, but we don't want to touch the trim with the roller. So, that's what we do. So, that is how to cut in walls, um, corners, and trim with a roller. Again, you just want to take that, let's see if we can, just want to take that brush, you want to 
place a nice even bit of pressure on the brush coming down now if you look at this see how on this edge there's a buildup of paint okay and if you can tell the difference on this side there's not on this side there is that's why if you come back on a second pass and you're going to take it even closer that's why you can come back there's still a little build up of paint and so you come back a third time as you're coming on the trim and then look it is flat there is no longer a build up there and that's why that works when you're when you're cutting in okay so if you're going to cut in use a beveled brush bevel brush is going to give you the ability to get that tip down in the corners um, help you get that cut in take your time use a small brush there's not a problem using a one inch brush to cut in your walls your time okay um, the other thing is you know dip it in you only want about a half inch of paint on the tip of that brush take one side slide it across the lid of the can get the get the paint off the other side of the brush so you only have paint on one side of the bristles get a nice straight line pull down at a nice steady even manner cut it in okay this is pretty easy guys and you know what again they're your walls if you come through there and you put a little paint on, on a piece of trim you can go down and get you a hobby little paintbrush like what they would use to to paint it a wine and design and come back and touch up your trim this is a, this is a job that you absolutely can do and you know there's a lot of satisfaction in doing the work on your own home so anyways from my Tabor city home let's build something let's fix something let's paint something do something with your hands america is not a disposable nation god bless and we'll see you later